well. Look what has finally landed in the Big Rock garage. It's a Yamaha Tenere 700. It's been a long wait to get one of these bikes and I'm so excited to have it for long-term testing. I This is my bike. I purchased it. Thanks so much to my friend Jesse. Uh, he goes under the name Geomoto ADV. He's a great guy. I've been riding with him forever. And he sold me this bike for a great deal. Obviously, it's really well set up. It has just under 5,000 miles on it. And yeah, thanks, Jesse. If you're watching, I'm super happy with this bike. It's a bike that I've been wanting to buy for the channel for a long time. Yamaha was having a hard time getting me one as a test bike, and they kind of stopped responding. So my response was, well, if I want to test out the bike and give my honest opinion, I'll just go ahead and buy one for the channel and keep it long term. So super excited. This replaces my Silver Africa Twin that I've done some videos on. This is a bit smaller, a bit lighter, and honestly, it's just the newest, latest, and greatest thing that everyone's crazy about, and so I just need to own one and uh, test it out. Plus, not just for my business, but I think this is going to be a bike that really works for a lot of the riding that I like to do, which is kind of like a 50% dirt, 50% street kind of riding. So like I mentioned, and as you can see here, this bike is far from stock. Now, the things that it has are mostly like bolt-on things, right? So we've got LED driving lights here. We've got, of course, this beautiful graphics kit by Visid Design. Um, we've got Barkbuster handguard, Tusk crash bars, Tusk skid plate, IMS foot pegs. We've got a Yoshimura full exhaust system. So all the way up here, the headers all the way back, the cat's been taking out, and this bike sounds incredible. You will get to hear that in a minute. It's got a luggage rack here that replaces the passenger seat. I've got a C-Concept seat. I've got um, a GPS mount. I've got all sorts of awesome things here. So just give the bike a walk around. She is really, really beautiful. Tail tidy kit, I believe that's also Yoshimura LED turn tunnels in the back. I took off the passenger pegs to save weight and it looks a little bit nicer without them. I've got the Yamaha factory heated grips. Uh, there's my driving light switch. So this bike is beautifully set up. Thank you again, Jesse, for setting it all up for me and then selling it to me for a great price. Factory lights look really cool. But by now you've seen a lot of videos on the Tenere 700 because worldwide it's been out a couple years. And in America and here in the U.S., I think it's been out about a year. They're very hard to get, and so I'm really lucky to have one. So the videos that I create, the content that I create for this bike, are really going to focus on what I normally do. So comparing it to other bikes. So I've owned the 790R, I've owned the Africa Twins, I've had the 800 GS, I've had the KTM 990, I've had V-Stroms, Tigers, pretty much everything out there. And I know that's why a lot of you watch my channel, because you like all the comparisons I make and all the real world advice I give you about the different bikes. So we'll be able to really see how this stacks up against those bikes. And if it really is that kind of unicorn or close to it in terms of light enough to be off-road capable, but still powerful enough and sort of have enough comfort to cruise on the highway and sort of do a little bit of everything. One of the things I really like about this bike off the bat, I've ridden it once already, this is going to be my second ride on it, is the simplicity of it, but also the quality. Like it feels like a very high quality machine, all the finishings, you, you feel like, you know, this engine is incredibly proven, it's also just a gem of an engine, really, really nice. Oh, I've also got the camel one finger clutch on there set to the middle position. Um, but yeah, I, I like the simplicity. It's actually really nice just to have one button for ABS, have a simple dashboard, no TFT. You know, I just got done reviewing that Africa Twin, the 1100, and it was just kind of overwhelming with all that dashboard. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump on and uh, give this thing some good testing. We'll do some street riding, we'll do some off-road. I'll just give you my initial impressions and kind of comparisons with the 790, with the Africa Twins, with the bikes that I've been riding recently. Because I know a lot of you are wondering, should you buy one of these? Well, Yamaha has made it very tempting with the price, obviously. It, 10,000 US dollars, this thing is a steal for what you get. All right, let's fire this bad boy up here. God, it sounds so good with that Yoshimura pipe. Oh man, I normally am not one to do that, but this bike sounds so good. 
you're probably going to hear that a lot in this video so yeah if you have one of these yamahas with a cp2 engine you might want to get an exhaust for it it sounds amazing oh i could listen to that all day So this is my second time riding this bike. The first time I rode it, I actually did the same route that I'm riding right now. And my initial impressions were kind of versus the 790 is that the engine, I'll just gonna come right out and say it. I really prefer this engine to the 790. Now I haven't ridden the 890, but the reason I like this engine better so far is that watch this, like, Okay, fourth gear, I'm going to lug down to 2,000 RPM. Look how smooth it is. Like, it's so tractable and smooth. It feels like you can never stall it. And the way that the power comes on is so gentle and so easy to ride. It's so linear. It doesn't have, like, a hard hit that the KTM does, which can be a little bit more difficult to ride. But let me give you a sense of how this delivers power. But it's just very linear there's no jerkiness to it now i should mention that this bike has had an ecu tune so the ecu has been flash tuned uh, i'll put the name of that company down here in the description or in the text because i can't remember it offhand but jesse the previous owner had that done and i have to say that with that tune it is the smoothest fueling of any adventure bike I've ridden. Like, on and off throttle is so smooth. There's no jerkiness at all. This thing is a real pleasure to ride out here on the street. Now, in terms of power and how fast it is, it's not that fast. But that shouldn't be a surprise. You know, it's a 700 engine. It has around 70, 75 horsepower. So that's about 25 less than the Africa Twin and about 25 less than the 790 or the 890. So yeah, you don't expect it to be that fast. But what's refreshing about this is that I can use all the power. Well, I can use most of the power and it's not intimidating, right? On some of the higher powered bikes, um, if you use full open throttle a lot, there's a little Honda CRF 450L, I think. If you use full power on those big bikes, you just gets out of hand quickly. But with this, it's it's a lot more fun and engaging. So my impressions of riding it on the street are that the chassis is really good, the suspension's firm enough, the brakes are very progressive, they might feel a little mushy for some people, but that's an advantage off-road because it's very easy to modulate the brakes. There's enough braking power there, you see, it's there, and there's that third gear, I mean, look, I can go third gear, let me just do this, third gear, I'm going to just let the bike idle itself. 15 miles an hour and I can open the throttle in third gear and there's I don't need a downshift that's how good this engine is it truly is a gem of an engine god I love riding this thing and keep in mind I have knobby tires on right now I've got the Motaz Rouse tire The wind protection is surprisingly good. I expected this stock windshield to have buffeting because my experience with bikes when they have an upright windshield like this is that they generate a lot of wind turbulence, but I'm wearing the Climb Cryos Pro right now for filming and I don't really get much buffeting. There's some wind noise, it's a little blustery, but it doesn't vibrate your helmet like a lot of adventure bikes do. And that's a very surprising, a very refreshing thing that there's, you don't have the buffeting. 
So there's no riding modes, there's no complicated electronics. And although I do appreciate what electronics have brought to modern motorcycles, I also appreciate a simple bike like this. And based on the feedback and the comments that a lot of you have given over the past year on my channel, a lot of you want this. You don't want or need the cruise control and the riding modes and the TFT. This is what you've asked for and Yamaha has delivered it with almost no downsides except maybe their you know lack of production or lack of availability lately especially in the US if you want to talk about ergonomics and comfort so you know I, I watched some videos on this bike that said oh the handlebars are too far forward and they're too straight they need to have more sweep but I don't agree like the reason they did that is for this when you stand up the handlebars are in a good position for standing like you don't need risers unless you're maybe like six foot two or over then you might need risers um, but yeah it's in a really good position for off-roading and for the street it's still comfortable some people feel like the bars there's a little bit too much reach to the bars I could see how you'd say that if you were like more of a touring rider but I think if you're gonna use this bike in its design envelope for off-roading and a combination of street I think uh, you know, give the stock handlebars a chance. <laughs> oh, this is too much fun. So, this engine is so good. Oh, this road is really rough, actually. That... This engine is so good that you can kind of just leave it in third gear on roads like this. Boy, this road really needs to be graded. So this bike inspires fairly aggressive off-road riding, in my opinion. I know one of the first things you're gonna ask me is, well, how does it compare to the Africa Twin? It feels, uh, it feels a lot lighter and a lot smaller, and that's because it is. It's about 60 pounds lighter than the standard Africa Twin, and it's slimmer, more narrow. It has actually similar suspension travel, actually a little bit less. has a little bit less ground clearance, but almost the same. Um, but let me put it this way. This feels more like a big dirt bike and less like an adventure bike, if that makes sense. And another thing that I'm noticing, so I don't know. Oh my God, this is just really, really good, you guys. Oh, this is so much fun. The engine delivers power in, in such a great way. I'm able to drift around all these corners with the throttle and it feels so natural. So if you watch Ryan Fortnine's kind of miniature review on it, he talked about how the placement of the countershaft sprocket and the angle of the drive chain means that it has anti-squat. So when you're on the throttle, the suspension geometry doesn't change as much and it still has steering when you're under throttle input. And uh, gave that car a little show there. <laughs> and I think Ryan was right about that. I didn't really believe it when I watched the video. It seemed kind of gimmicky what he was saying. But there must be something to it. Because it steers way better than I was expecting. All right, so we're going to go on a little more of a Jeep trail, a little bit more of a technical trail here. I take a lot of my test bikes on this trail, so I have a good sense of how it's going to compare to the other bikes I've ridden. Let's go ahead, start this up. I will go ahead and turn the ABS off. See, now there's how you do it, Honda. You know, I complained so much on the Africa to interview about that process. On this bike, you just push a button and there it is, which is what the old Africa wouldn't, old Africa wouldn't have, but anyway, let's go ahead and get going. Ooh! 
okay. I probably ride a little bit more aggressively than the average adventure rider would. I'm not trying to brag or be egotistical. I'm just giving you a sense of comparison. Like, I like to get a move on when I'm in the dirt and uh, I don't, I'm not too easy on the bike. So the suspension, yeah, like everybody else has said, it's a little bit on the soft side. But it's not bad. Like, it's totally doable. Just having so much fun, it's hard to talk. Um, I would say that if you are 220 pounds or under, and if you're just kind of the average rider, you're not gonna be pushing it too crazy. You're gonna be pretty happy with the stock suspension, the spring rates and everything. It's very plush and compliant. So I have, what I did was on my first ride of the bike, before I rode it, I zeroed out all the suspension to the factory settings. And what I ended up doing it uh, halfway through my ride the other day was I clicked in like maybe three clicks of compression and rebound on both ends. So I firmed up everything, maybe 10 or 20% from the factory settings and that seemed to help quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I would say the spring rates are still a little bit soft, even for me at 190. Like you can, you can bottom it, but it's nothing like that Africa twin I just tested. It's way better than that. So one of the things that is most noticeable to me riding this versus the other bikes I've ridden, including the 790, is how natural it is to throttle steer around corners and how composed the chassis is when you're under power. Uh, like it doesn't need traction control. You know, I talked about before in my other videos about uh, how I bought the 790 because I wanted the, the advanced traction control and all that, but this engine is so much more tractable and so much smoother and the chassis set up so well that I don't think it needs traction control. It's so easy to control. This is the perfect adventure bike engine. This is what we've always wanted, right? I mean, this is what everyone's always been asking for. Like, oh, give us a KLR, but with a twin cylinder engine, and a little bit better suspension and, you know, 70 horsepower, something like that. And that's what Yamaha did. It's too bad Kawasaki didn't step up to the plate and do that with a new KLR give us something to compete with. Oh God, it's so easy to throttle steer this thing. Let's see how it is. Can I spin around under braking? Yeah. You guys, this thing is very easy to control. <laughs> you have to remember, you have to remember that you're not a rally racer on this. It feels kind of like a rally bike or what you would think a rally bike would feel like. Now we're not really even on the trail anymore, but it's okay, don't tell the Forest Service. So I was riding my Africa Twin up here a few days ago, and I was like, man, this bike feels too heavy. Tenere doesn't give me that problem. Tenere feels natural doing this. It's like a big giant dirt bike. I don't know where this goes. I can't remember. I think it loops around or something or dead ends. This bike encourages exploring. And I think for those of you who like BDRs, backcountry discovery routes, those kinds of rides, this bike is pretty much perfect for that. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice if they could lose another 40 or 50 pounds, but um, there's really no way to do that without adding a ton of cost and using you know, some crazy kind of metal or something in the frame, but I'm more comfortable riding this 
than the 790. I feel like it's just easier to ride. It feels just that just a little bit smaller. Um, I was worried that it was going to feel kind of top heavy because you know the 790 has that low slung tank, but it really doesn't feel top heavy. So this is the trail that normally I would only take like a smaller dual sport on, but I'm not having any issues riding this on here. Well, obviously this is just an initial impressions ride and this is not a thorough test. That'll come later. Uh-oh. Well, I don't see, I don't be able to go. Oh, there's a go around right there. I did not plan to go on trails like this today on this video, but that's what this bike encourages. So I'm just gonna stop right here and tell you right now, like if you're on the fence about this bike, just buy one. You can't go wrong with it. I, I mean, there's nothing to worry about. It's gonna be reliable. Um, you can explore with it. It's comfortable on the street. There's a few things like on the street, it revs a bit higher. I mean, again, it's a smaller engine than, uh, you know, like the Africa Twin or the GSs, things like that. It, it's a little bit, feels a little more high strung, like it's working a little bit harder, like when I rode on the freeway yesterday with it. But it's not bad. It's smooth, there's no vibration. But just look how trim the bike is. Um, one thing that people have pointed out is that the way that they mounted the exhaust here on this hanger, that if you have a lot of impact coming in here, like it seems like this is kind of a weak point. This is welded to the frame. I don't think that's bolted on. And so some people have bent this in and totaled their bike because they, they need a new frame. So that's kind of an interesting design. I don't know why they kind of put the low pipe. Maybe the pipe should be up here. I've seen some kits that relocate it. Let me know if any of you guys have done that. But it's going to take a lot to convince me to get rid of this exhaust because this bike sounds, it's one of the best sounding engines I've ever ridden. So really good job Yamaha on that. So I'm preparing to do a video talking about different sizes of adventure bikes. So I've got the 500, I've got the 700, I've got the Africa Twin, the 1000, and I've got the 1250 GS Adventure. So I'm gonna do a video talking about, you know, how do you decide what size is right for you and what compromises do you wanna make? And I developed this cool scoring system and it's gonna be cool. So stay tuned for that. I think you guys will like it. It's something I'm able to do because I've got all these bikes in the garage at once. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this initial impressions ride of the Yamaha T7 and uh, I'm kind of in love at this point. I know that's what you get when you get a new bike, so kind of take it with a grain of salt, and there'll have to be a lot more follow-up, longer-term videos really evaluating it, but so far, my initial impressions are extremely, extremely high, and I, as much as I like the 790s, and I really think they're an amazing machine, they do offer a bit more performance. Suspension is a bit better on the KTM. But overall, if I mean, if I was doing it all again from scratch, uh, now that I have enough time on the T7, and I put like three or four thousand miles on the 790, I would go for the 700 Tenere. I think if you're looking for a midsize adventure bike, you know, I'm not sure that you need the 100 and 100 horsepower, or the 105 horsepower that you know the 890 has now, and the race level suspension. This is going to be enough for 80 or 90 percent of people and uh, you save about $4,000 on this versus the KTM. Plus, the big elephant in the room with the KTM is reliability. And yeah, there are some reliability concerns cropping up, some issues that people are having on that platform for sure. And there's a lot of videos out there about that. So anyway, I've gone on long enough. Let me know what questions or comments you guys have about the T7. Uh, obviously, like I said, more videos coming out comparing it to the other adventure bikes that I've been riding. Um, but let me know what comments and questions you have below. And uh, until then, uh, if you found this useful, please subscribe. Please give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment, consider a Patreon support, and until then, ride safe. Uh, we'll see you out on the trail. We'll see you on the next video.